Greetings, everybody, and welcome back to episode 15 of The Jagna and the Thinker. I am the Jagna Brandon, and I'm with my man, the Thinker. Aaron, what's up, Aaron? What's popping, man? Hey, I heard we got some good news, man. So you better than I am, man. So what you got going hey, man, on at I home? I ain't got man? no haircut, bro. It's been a long <laughs> week. Baby, my, my third baby girl has come home finally. So we've welcomed her into our home, and it has been a whirlwind since she has arrived. My my she's doing good. She's doing fine. That's awesome, but my man. my daughter's adjustment to her being home is crazy, man. Oh, my youngest is super clingy. She thinks she's a baby doll. You know, she wants to you know yeah, pull her like, arms and this all ain't that. Working like that lady. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like, look, man, you gotta put some hand sanitizer on. You get right. <laughs> she ain't used to you like that. But no, right, it's been right, it's been right. a blessing, man. It's good to you know, before the holiday season kicks off to have the fam all together and Absolutely. be done with this awesome, NICU man. situation. And that NICU bill, bro, oh my God. Oh, That's I a whole nother. I'm at the I'm at the chop it up with you on you know, some financial too. I need some help, bro. Listen, it get, it get rough, man. It get rough. Man, you know, I'm about man. to start a GoFundMe. <laughs> I'm about to get my griff on, man, for real. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. But uh yeah, yeah I'm good, man. You know, um just uh Working through these YouTube streets, man. Family, everybody is safe. Both kids starting their basketball season, finishing up the first half of their senior years collectively. Yeah. So it's a little bit bittersweet. And, and you know, yeah. I'm watching people on the internet actually find ways to criticize uh, the King Richard movie about a black yeah. father actually teaching black. I mean, I, Brandon, I, what am I missing, dude? Like, what am I like? Yeah. What? You know, I'm familiar with the story. I haven't seen the movie, but I am familiar with uh, his story and how he really was striving for you know, his whole family to move beyond Com beyond Compton. Oh my but God, really for those two girls to have opportunity and to go through that and to be criticized, you know, 25 years later for doing that. It's crazy, but it just shows you where we're at as far as black fathers, black men who are affirming and trying and how we just get demonized for everything. It's insane. Yeah, and uh, I know we got our, our other topic, but the, the, the irony is that all those people that talked about him, I know that they're not going to read his book. No. And the reason that they, they won't read his book is because he is very clear in that book about talking about yeah. white supremacy. Yeah. <laughs> he is talking about the struggles that he and his family and raising those girls and trying to yeah. be tennis pros that he went through. And that created some mm -hmm. of that demeanor that he had because he had to be like that brandon coming right. through the demographics and through the circumstances he had but they'll never talk about that they right. just want to talk about will smith is trying to rob him even though the two sisters gave the green light and the family gave the green light on the movie as well right but we're still trying we're still trying to figure out a way why was the movie not about his mom because it wasn't about his mother it wasn't <laughs> about their mother it was about him he was out there swinging the racket. That right. takes nothing away from their mom. Right. We're, Brandon, we can't, Brandon what, you're a therapist. We cannot be this stupid. Are we really this stupid? It's not stupidity, man. It, it's <laughs> it's even worse than stupidity. It's just plain <laughs> ignorance. Like You can be stupid, but you can also be ignorant and blind to emotions <sighs> and feelings. We're not thinking. When it, come, when it comes to black male, female di uh, dynamics, mm. we don't think. We just feel. And anything that can even even a whiff or a sniff mm. of anti anything anti black women is a problem. Anything pro black man is a problem unless the black man is crying or twerking. But I'll just say it that way. <laughs> if the, if the black man's dead. doing, or he might be dead. And, not and, even and that, that. don't. You're right. I, I don't even. Say, I don't I, even think that might. Bullshit. We could get. We'll get into it in a minute. Not. Absolutely. Not even then. Unless he's some celebrity. If he ain't a celebrity, he just another nigga dead. That's it. Hey man, talk to and him. That, and that's and that's real. If we want to be completely honest about it, but we're gonna get into it as we go. And 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 again, it's not to throw more fuel on the fire. It's just to have an honest dialogue and conversation. Because at the end of the day, man, like Richard Williams was did something that many black fathers <laughs> try to do all the time, but we're not always successful. Is try to make sure our kids have a better life, and we. We will sacrifice whatever we need to to make that happen. And granted, yes, without Serena Williams and Venus Williams' mother, he probably would not be able to do that because there were other kids at home. One hundred percent, he Absolutely. wouldn't have had the luxury to just leave and have them, and you know, doing tennis tournaments and practicing on tennis courts and you know, fending off local gang members and stuff so they can practice. He wouldn't be able to do that if there was not somebody watching the other babies, man. And but again, it's the demonization of black yeah. men doing something constructive and being affirming. And it's like we can't do that. We we have to be crying or twerking 
for us to get respect from our counterparts. That's crazy. Crying and twerking. Well, I ain't twerking. I might cry if I see a good movie, but I ain't. <laughs> and, and, and there's nothing wrong with crying, but what I'm saying no, no, is, I'm with you. I'm it's with the you. it's the black boy joy thing. It's like, well, let's just beat the the masculinity down to a point where it's just too soft to even move through life. And Facts. That, life is too hard to just be emotional all the time. We can't Absolutely. do that. Absolutely. And that's part of that's part of our trauma response anyway. But anyway, man, we diving. In. We we going deep early, man. We ain't even yeah, early, in. bro. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't even ten minutes in, man. <laughs> But but yeah but so 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 you so your boys is doing good you know the rounding out senior year in high school and college yeah basketball's man. popping off everything else going good everybody's straight man you know I'm healthy I'm happy and um, I'm ready to talk about some things that man. I think people are gonna really I'm I think this is we've done a lot of great episodes but I think that this one is going to be really really good because we're gonna man. get some talking points from one of the most respected black women in them YouTube streets. Yeah. Uh, the Crimson Cure herself, and um, she's dropping some knowledge that um, I think is going to be very, very constructive for some of the men and women that are listening to here. So I'm looking forward to it. All right, you want to dive right into it? Let's get it. Let's, Let's get, get right it. to it. All right, we're going to hear from it. Kendra, Kendra from the Cur the Crimson Cure, and you know, Kendra's somebody who I remember before uh, she even started her YouTube channel, she was very instrumental on uh, BGS's channel, Black Gnostic Speaks. Uh, and and when BGS created a women's channel, she was one of the lead. I would say she was one of the leading female voices on there as well. Very constructive and all the things that she's done, and really is about hers. And she's really uh, she's grown. I mean, she's almost got fifty thousand subs. Man, that's crazy. I mean, that's amazing. It's not she's bad. Killing. It's a, it's she's a great thing. Yep. But she's giving constructive content. So we're gonna we're gonna do a couple snippets uh, from Kendra's. We're gonna look at three different snippets from Kendra's talk. That she put on a few uh was it a few months ago? It was a minute ago. Yeah. Uh and then we'll uh give some commentary on it and we'll invite you all too to share in the in the comments section in the chat any thoughts that you have as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and cue up the first clip and we're gonna get rocking and rolling on Kendra. Here we go. All right. And don't make me, don't make me find a recipe for jollof rice. Boop, boop. A whole West African meal. Boop. Okay. Car be carved out, but I'll be happy. But anyway, let me go ahead and get to the topic. So what are we talking about today? Okay. The real reasons that we avoid better men, ladies. So what I need to first do is we need to talk about what's a better man. Because there are a lot of narratives in this space about what makes a man better than another man and what makes a high value man and what makes a, this, that, and the third. You know, a lot of narratives. The first narrative is the argument of the Pookie and Ray Ray versus the educated Wayne. And I don't like to use the word educated Lane because education does not make you Lane. Education is a very important part of the 10 life value system, and it does not make you lame to have education. OK. And everybody should know my stance on that by now. But for the purposes of what I'm saying, I'm going to talk in that strain. Because there are a lot of uh, narratives about the Pookie and the Ray Ray and the so-called educated brother and want the educated brothers automatically better because he's educated. The first thing that we have to do as a people and as women is we need to drop these gynocratic words, labels, and definitions, especially in a space that is meant to be red pill. See, if we're going to be red pill, both the men and the women, we're going to have to go ahead and do that and start dropping every aspect of the gynocracy, even out of our language, 
Okay, words are very powerful. We can manifest things into our lives. Okay, through speaking, words become things. Okay. So we're going to have to drop all of this gynocratic language. And I've said this actually before, probably about two years ago or so, that the categorization of black men and splitting them into uh, the, the pookie or whatnot, the street dude and the educated dude is a gynocratic structure. That is a gynocratic construct meant to divide black men away from one another and to not see themselves, see them in, in each other, to see themselves in each other so that they can have empathy and camaraderie and brotherhood. Because what it does is it sets up a competition for the attention of women, which is gynocratic. Because the gyno gynocracy created that false narrative in the first place. So, oh, you don't, you can't compete and get women because you're this type of way. And you can get the most women because you're that type of way. And it's really used in order to enforce dysfunctions. And we're actually going to get into that. Boom. All right. Man, I love that girl, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> can't hear you. Can't hear you. Before you dive in, let's Go break ahead. down a few. Let's break down this a few concepts so people are clear on what was shared. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say also um, there might be some words that were yep. used that we need to make sure that the public understands. Because I had to Google the first one because she was using gynocracy so much, yeah, and I had to Google what, it. I was like, man, what are yeah. we talking about? So get right. right to it, but you got it. So gynocracy. So if you have not been in this red pill space in the last three to five years, that may be a new term. That's not a term that's in the daily lexicon. That's not a term that's in a daily verbiage within particular black community, any community, really. really. A gynocracy is a society that is ruled, that has majority rule by women. In the United States, one can say and bring evidence to prove that the United and Black America is a gynocracy, which means that our women have more leverage and power socially, social power, capital, mm -hmm. than the men do. Now, the narratives that happen in our communities, especially with feminism, would say different because they will lump Black men in with all men, which is not true. Black men are worse off than Black women in many different categories within the United States, statistically. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, but we but we don't think of it like that because black men are abusive, and can be abusive, and black men are necessary. Dysfunctional black men are necessary for this country to keep functioning. And without that, once black men become non dysfunctional, this country has to look different, and that's the dirty little secret. So when we talk about gynocracy, it's a societal rule or societal power and control that's dictated by women. All right? So I wanted to break that down because a lot of people probably don't even know what the heck that word is. Like yourself, right. you just like, let me look at that Absolutely. up. But we have to think about that. Now, that sounds far-fetched, but if you do some research and some, um, yes, a page, well, we'll have to break down what patriarchy looks like, but sexism We need to get definitely, Dr. Curry on here then. If we're going to do sex, all that. Sexism, <laughs> sexism is definitely heavily present in Absolutely. our community. Absolutely. And sexism directs a lot of our identity, both male and female. Mm -hmm. Patriarchy, though, we'll have to break down how does patriarchy show up. And if you say the black church, we're going to have to talk about that. But outside mm -hmm. of the black church, <laughs> where does patriarchy show up at? Right, so right. go ahead, brother. I'm let you go in and share what you need to share. So first of all, the last point that she said, which is that it's meant to create dysfunction. And one of the things that our women hate him. But one of the things that I love that Kevin Samuel said when I first started listening is that we as black men need to get away from the notion, said it the same way that Kendra said it, Brandon, the same way that the corporate guy and the blue collar street guy are different. They need each other yes. because one creates an infrastructure to build something and the other creates an infrastructure to manage it. 
Yes. And those are things that we just have to, as men particularly, because remember, we're talking about these from a standpoint for black men. So the first mm -hmm. thing that we have to do is remove ourselves from having those conversations because as men, I have been one of those. Sometimes you we develop this false sense of ego, which Mr. Fuller always right. talks about, is that you think that because you're in the house and the other Negro is in the field, that you're some way better than the other person. You're not. One person is just hot and you got a little AC, but y'all are still in the same place. <laughs> and so that's what the first point. But Brandon, when she says it removes the process of having love and empathy for one another, right. that is the number one thing. Mm -hmm. The number one thing. Because if we're in a competition, we see this and we're going to talk about it with Young Dolph, but if we're in a competition and we are not having empathy for each other, that means that we start to develop that thing that we call vacant esteem, which means that I don't have any self-esteem and I don't look at you with any esteem. So I feel that your life, your family, nothing matters to me. And right. unfortunately, we're seeing this with more young black men in our urban cities even more every single day. And it's right. extremely important that we stop separating ourselves. Because let's be honest, I'm, I'm, I'm in corporate America and sometimes... I look at the young black men in those urban centers as not like me. They have the same exact problems that I have, except that they're experiencing direct poverty, direct violence, and things that are a little bit more direct. I might be experiencing them a little bit differently because I made some different economic choices or my family set me up, but we are still in the same exact system and we cannot afford to think about, to think about it as we're not. Now, I know some of those different uh, listen, let's be real. I know some of the problems in urban cities are very, very problematic and they're hard. And sometimes we want to abandon them. But one of the things that we can't do is think that their issues will not trickle again, will not trickle down to some of us that are living in a quote unquote upper middle class or maybe a wealthy life. Because mm -hmm. the reality is, is that we're experiencing them just in different ways. Mr. Fuller just says, you're just not getting hit over the head with the Negro knocker anymore. <laughs> They're just, you're just being robbed economically and you're giving a false sense of entitlement. But mm -hmm. you looking at another black male as being inferior is problematic because we as a group are failing in many areas. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, a lot of our desires are the same. They're just 100%. manifested differently. A yeah. lot of our desires are the same, whether you're the corporate dude or you're the dude who's making six figures or not, we have the same desires. We want nice cars. We want fine women. We want the newest, whatever devices are out Absolutely. there. We want to look good, even if you're the corporate dude. And we listen to the same music. It's still in us. It's a hardware issue. It ain't a software problem at that it point. It is. Yeah. It's still in us. But what ends up happening is because you have different access to resources, you get to manifest your black male destiny a little different than a dude who's on the street. It's all the same, though. Because we can quote the same lyrics to the same songs. Full transparency. I would be considered a high-value man. I make mm -hmm. I, I'm, I make good six figures. Mm -hmm. You know, I got two master's degrees. I run an organization. I have a side business. Mm -hmm. I listen to Young Dolph. I ain't yeah. doing stuff. I'm be, I'm, I was hurt. I'm not joking. I, I pull up my album music right now. Preach. I listen to Doc. <laughs> yeah. I listen to Key. I, I listen to Key Glock too. I ain't trying to shoot nobody, but that energy it comes from somewhere. That's a part of me. Mm. That's inside of me. So it's a way for me to channel a lot of that stuff. But I ain't living that lifestyle. I know how to disconnect from it. But I'll be I'll be listening to Dolph, and then I'll hop on a Zoom meeting. That's you know, it's a contract for ten thousand dollars or more, or a hundred thousand dollar grant meeting. Mm -hmm. Nobody would know. But I'm a black man at the end of the day. <laughs> yep, so again, absolutely. The, des the desires are the same. I'm serious. There, there have been times where I'm working on contracts. We're talking $300,000 contracts. And I'm playing Young Dolph, Money Man. I'm playing, you know, I'm playing Future. I'm playing everybody because that's me. That's where I come from at the end of the day. But I found a way to decompartmentalize myself from the effery, man. Like at some point, that's what we hope people can get to. It's just like what we always hear. It's like, man, if they can transfer them hustle skills in corporate America, everything could be all right, which is partly true. But they haven't learned how to socialize beyond that space because they haven't been exposed to anything different. Absolutely. That's and when they are exposed to something different, they're extremely uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. That is one of the big things. So we'll get into it as we go. 
Uh, but any other thoughts on what Kendra said? Because she mentioned this uh, system that we're going to take a look at as well of these 10 points um, that I, that I, I mean, I never heard of it until I watched the video. And I was like, oh, man, this is actually pretty dope and helps explain a lot of things. But any other thoughts from you? Um, no, I, I just think that um, that was a good way to start off that video in reference to also the high value talk. And she was coming at it from a standpoint of what women are looking for and quote unquote is a better man. And what I would just like to say is that we have to take some of those talking men. We can learn a lot. And the reason why I watched that video is because I'm not listening to Kendra from the women's perspective. I'm looking at it from her perspective. What do we as men have to do in order to further the infrastructure and help our communities? Because I still take on the notion that everything that we see if black men, and I think uh, Nayasha, she uh, she always says it, but if black men are responsible for everything we see, then guess what? Then we have to take on the responsibility for everything right. we see. We we'll see, right? So it's our responsibility to get better. It's our responsibility to create the infrastructure, to have empathy, to have love, and create all these things that she was talking about. And then our women and our relationships. And and I also hate the I hate the term falling in line. Because that creates some of that those negative, you know what I'm saying? That yeah, creates some of those those negative talking points. It's not falling in line. We want healthy relationships with black women. Period. End of story. And black mm -hmm. women want healthy relationships with black men. And whatever mm -hmm. we have to do to get to that point, that'll help us work to not only end this system and create a new system of culture that we're supposed to have. If these are some of the talking points that we need to have, we need to have these discussions. Absolutely. And and you, and I want to talk, let's talk a little bit more about this language because it was brought up in the chat by Simply Neek as well, is this mm -hmm. elitist mentality that comes with some of this language. And and it does come out of the red pill. It does come out of the red pill talking point. Can you talk red pill? Can you give somebody a quick definition yeah, of red yeah. pills because they <laughs> don't gotta, know? <laughs> I got to remember it. I got to keep my definitions <laughs> fresh. So for folks who have no idea what the heck I'm talking about when I say red pill or red mm -hmm. pill community, there is a movement that has been taking place really since the late 2000s, I'll say 2007 and eight, where there's been uh, what's now known as the manosphere, where men get together and talk about male issues and things that are going on in society. In the red pill, what has taken place in this, con what it, the concept of the red pill has been uh, referenced to kind of label the philosophy, which in this space, a lot of men hold. And the red pill comes from the movie The Matrix, where Neo has to take the red pill, which is the or reality the of life, right. or the blue pill, which is to stay naive and just kind of go upon life uh, like it goes. But in this space, there have been other pills that have been added. We have black pill, who are just people who are fatalist and feel like the world is going to go to hell in a handbasket before we know it. Mm -hmm. We have pink pill, which is a, which is the feminist angle of all this stuff. Right, right, uh, right. <laughs> we have uh, purple pill, who are people who are like, yes, this is the truth but I'm still going to stay novice and kind of in the middle okay. at the same time. Okay. So we also have purple pills. So there's a lot of pills out there that people there's are swallowing pills, at right. this point. We need to stop <laughs> taking all these damn pills. And <laughs> I start, agree. <laughs> start using some natural remedies. Good Lord. Uh, right. It's kind of crazy, but, but that's kind of where, so when we see when you hear red pill, that's what happens. But from this red pill mentality, which I'm, I'm, I'm a subscriber to it. I'm going to be honest with everybody. The red pill helped me through a, a very dark point in time in my life where I was questioning a lot of things, including being a therapist. Yeah, we definitely gonna overdose, but you gotta take it, you gotta take the pills in moderation. You gotta be right, careful. Right, right, right. You, you get in that black pill space, boy, you're gonna be hopeless as hell. Oh, Lord. you ain't gonna make no wild. money. You're gonna be eating PB and J sandwiches laying on your yeah. mama's couch, bro. <laughs> Not even mama gonna kick you out. You're trying to get in. But but no, but seriously, red pill helped me. Um, and that's how I got into the men's sphere because I was searching for manhood because I thought I was doing everything that I was supposed to do, right. but my marriage was falling apart mm. because I was under the impression that I should be this 50-50 brother who's doing all good, who's got his wife's, you know, his back and all this stuff. And my wife did not want all that, but she didn't also didn't know how to communicate what she did want either. So what ended up happening was I said, you know what, I can't change her. I knew that from psychology. I can only influence her decisions. I have to change myself. So I started searching and doing work. And then I ran into the red pill content. And I was like, oh, male, female nature. Something that I've known a little bit about, but I haven't really right. dived into. And then that's when stuff started clicking, man. I was like, oh, 
And I have to thank Mr. Fuller because Mr. Fuller really helped me get a mind frame for thinking through things. Mm. Because if I if I did not if I did not come into counter racism through Mr. Fuller and the folks from the cows and stuff like that, I would not have the proper framework to think. And I would be just like some of these other elitist dudes who's just like, yeah, she better fall in line. And I'm a high value man. And, you know, I made one hundred eighty five thousand dollars last year. Like telling my wife, shut up, and go make a sandwich. <laughs> you know like that's how these dudes are, though. No, I'm serious. That's how I know. Are. And it's scary. <laughs> I know. It is very <laughs> scary. Yes. <laughs> it's scary because these a lot of these dudes sound hurt. And that's what ends up happening is the women will say, oh, you just who hurt you? You got mommy issues. It's not that they're hurt. They grew up in a society where that's what they're being told, that they can't be a man. So they think that they have to they have to overemphasize what masculinity is. And then what ends up happening from that, they just get destructive. And then these dudes get mad because they get rejected by a lot of women because their approach is off and they don't have any game. That's the dirty little secret in the red pill community. But that's another case so my my search was i'm already married i've already found somebody i right. picked them i've you know i i don't win we don't change last names we we in there right, now right, right? right so my red pill awakening was a little different than a lot of these dudes a lot of these dudes they got child support they don't have several bad breakups they got baby mamas all over the place their red pill awakening is what they call red pill rage so they're pissed Ooh. women have hurt them literally the system has hurt them they come across this information. They're like, oh, F all these women. Like, they, B, bees ain't itch. That's what they on. Right, right, So when right, they get right. into that space and they harbor a lot of their thought process and their thinking through that hate, it just becomes toxic. And mm -hmm. that's where you get the elitism. Because, yes, in this society, you do. if you want to have a – what? well, can't even really say that. But if you want to have a traditional, healthy – uh, family with the male and female dynamic in it, you do need to have both the male and the and the female in cooperative relationships. That... Can be combative, can be combative. But what has happened with black folks is we we are in a combative dynamic because we both want to run the show a hundred percent. In this society, you cannot do that. <laughs> you can't do that. I mean, I, I just went through a situation myself. Very fresh example. Baby in the NICU. My wife was in the hospital for a month. Right. I could not run the show. No, there's no matter of patriarchy that could have changed that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like, right. I don't yeah. know what yeah. what I don't know what check yeah. I could have wrote or that. It was just it life happened. I was I was a single dad, bro. The whole month from August 26 to pretty much September 26, I was playing single dad. Mm -hmm. And thank God that in my that I was able to have the red pill to help me balance out my life a little bit. Because I could easily step into the role, the traditional roles that my wife did. Right. So we didn't right, really right. miss too much of a beat and, and it didn't hurt my family. We were able to keep moving forward. Now, if I was like some of these dudes in the way that they be thinking, man. Oh, shit, I would have had to, <laughs> oh, how you going to get sick with a baby, bitch? Like, I would have I been crazy. But that's how these dudes be thinking. Man, you need to be telling her she need to go to the NICU, yeah. come home, make you that, that food. Thing. Yeah. You put your feet up, and, bro. <laughs> what is you talking about, man? What are you like, talking about? But that's where these cats is. Yeah, I know that's where they come from, that's man. You're saying. not you're not playing your right role in society, Brandon. Take yeah. care of your children at the house. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> and I got girls too, so I'm doing oh, hair and all types of stuff. They would have been super mad, bro. Dude, but but dudes, again, man, they just, oh. It gets toxic because we, this is the thing, and we'll get back to Kendra in a second. I'll get off my soapbox. Yeah, now you're good, man. You're right. We're riding it. We have not, we in this space, especially with black men in the black manosphere, manosphere, we have not talked about healing our own pains and self development. We have say so stuck, and this is on damn near everybody's channel, on what the women ain't doing right, that we are not trying to develop ourselves. I know Kevin did start there, but he found a different lane and he's become super successful. You ran with it. But at, but at some that. point, yeah. at some point, we have to have voices out here to help the men get better in a real way and not have so many conversations about the women because it ain't really about them. They keep telling us over and over and over, why would we respect what y'all doing if y'all ain't got nothing to respect? Hello, that's the key right there. We have to if we if we are as powerful as we say in the manosphere, they will fall in line, quote unquote, once we get our stuff together. They will have no choice. But they got options just like we got options at the end of the day. So it's it's a lot, man. We ain't gonna be able to break it all down today. Uh, before but, we take that clip, I, I last night I told someone <laughs> I've been using this for like the last three weeks. 
I'm like, some of you then just got to be careful talking about y'all want to lead because you like you about to lead your family right off a cliff. And the issue that we run into is that we need we we need to have uh, the proper context of conversations, which is that you have to have a supportive spouse or partner that is going to be honest with you. And she's going to say, babe, I know you're trying this, but maybe this isn't working. See, Brandon, everybody wants to be smart, but nobody wants to act like they're done. All right. right. And here's and, and here's what and here's here's the perfect <laughs> reason. Let me give an example. Apple. Right. Tim Cook is the CEO of Apple. Everybody got an iPhone. Right. Mm -hmm. Tim Cook did not develop all these products you see by himself. <laughs> right. Tim Cook is a leader. He has a team of people that give him input. He looks at some of the products and he says, you know what? I think this is going to roll out well. I think this is going to. He's getting all this input. At the end of the day, he makes the decision, but he's taking in the input from the people because they're important. Right. The responsibility of the leadership still falls on him, but that doesn't that doesn't take away from the people's contribution because you have to lead the company in the right direction. He's going to listen to some of those people, Brandon, and guess what? Some of those ideas are going to work. Thank and guess yep. what? Some of those ideas are not going to work. That does yep. not remove the fact that he's the leader of the organization. Right. And that doesn't remove the fact that he still respects the people in there that are giving him the constructive feedback, criticism or ideas. Some right. of them work. Some of them don't. That's what our black families need to look like. Period. Yeah, absolutely. Some of these ideas are going to work. Some of these ideas are not. But if we're on the same page, we'll eventually get to our destination. As men, we got this mentality. We don't even want to listen to the woman, even though women have an innately <laughs> different perspective on things that we don't have. Sometimes mm -hmm. we just want to jump out the window. Women are a little bit more cautious sometimes. They're a little bit more conservative. Brandon, baby, you know what? I think you need to look at it like this. Brandon will throw his ego out the window and say, you know what? She's right. And things yeah. can work out. And then sometimes the wife might say, I'm going to let him run with this and see what it is. I think it's good. I, I might be hesitating a little bit, but I'm going to let Brandon. And it might work out. But that's the healthy, dynamic relationships are supposed to have. There's no competition right. in leadership. It is a benevolent dictatorship. That's mm -hmm. what it is. Y'all go to work every day, and y'all and <laughs> daddy tell everybody what to do, and nobody got a problem with it. <laughs> but all of a sudden, we get into our homes, and we had this competition. It's foolishness, man. Yeah. It's, it's trauma. foolishness. It's trauma responses from the men and the women. You, 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 the man. We, I listen to Zaddy every day at work, and now I'm trying to demand <laughs> somebody in my house do something. And the oh, women, you man. listen to Zaddy every day at work, telling everybody what to do, when to come and go, and it's foolishness. <laughs> but we're not on the same page at all, and that's why Mr. Fuller says y'all need to just stop this power dynamic period you have right. no power dynamic let's start from the basic ground level system of white supremacy we need to destroy it get on the same page and stop this competition right and and this is what and man i shouldn't even say this but one of the things too is sure, white right. supremacy yeah i'm gonna say it. <laughs> white supremacy is not the fuel to all the things that we see nope in black male female dynamics okay now, some people will say, Brandon, you crazy, but I, I have seen too many domestic violence situations, too many parents, male and female, leave their children. Mm -hmm. uh, I have seen too many relationships that should never been started. Ain't a white person in sight. Zaddy ain't got nothing to do with your bad decisions at all. Nothing. You, you, you just, you haven't figured out how to, how to pick a good partner, male and female. Right. But we don't want to talk about that. We want to run for therapy. I don't want to go yeah. too far off. Let's get back to Kendra, bro. All right. Let's they go, to they're going to be we'll like, man, I thought this was my young dog. That's what y'all <laughs> Shout out to dog, man. That's, it's unfortunate, but, hey, you know. All right. So here we go. Kendra's going to – okay. So the next part that we want to break down and talk about, Kendra's going to talk about the 10 life value system. Now, I've never heard of this until Kendra broke it down, but this is actually some system that is utilized in a lot of personal development spaces. So we're going to check this out. It's about another four minute clip uh, from Kendra breaking this down. And she does a great job at talking about the desires of women and how men function in these areas. That's the so, one. Yep. Man, cool. I mean, oh man. I mean, gems, 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 gems. All right, here we go. Ladies. 
is we look only at external things when it comes to men. And we get into relationships with men based only on whether or not he has the external five and to what degree. We avoid better men. Now we can talk about what is, what, what components make a better man. The first thing that he has are these 10 things in order. He starts with a value system. He has a value system. He has a system whereby he lives a code. He has it. Okay? He has one of those. He has a system of living. Now, this system that he has is not for you. It's for him. You need it once you get with him, but he doesn't have it because of you. Brandon, can we stop right there for a second? No value is in order. He's, he Go for it. Okay. Um, uh, um, so, who? <laughs> Man, I mean, that right there, I'll be honest, for black men, when I heard that, I said, and as a guy that used to be functioning in a manner to where you're looking to please a woman and mm. do things outside of it, when she says you have to have your own life principles, that's what we mean by leadership. Because right. you have to have a level of integrity and what you have to already have established what you want your family and what you want the outcome to look like. Not trying to get a woman or to create something. These are the values that I have within myself. Integrity, faith, uh, being uh, disciplined with my finances, having some sort of spiritual base and all these things. But these are the principles that I live by in my own particular life. So I'm not in a mess of dysfunction because let's be real. That's how a lot of black relationships come together. I'm a mess. You a mess. And we're coming together with this big pot of gumbo and trying to figure it out. As mm. black men, one of the best things that we could do is at an early age, and we talked about this a lot, developing a level of principle and discipline. Now, yeah. where does that come from? And where does that infrastructure come from? It also has to come from other men before us that have already had that established. And that was the thing that immediately caught me because I'm like, Brandon, we had a generation of men that had no direction. So what we see should not be surprising. What mm -hmm. are the principles? What are the values? Neely Fuller Jr. What is black culture? Mm -hmm. What is it for us men? What does the black family look like? Seriously, do we even have a code of anything? Other than we want to get, we'll, we'll get to this, but we want to get money. We want to go out and ball on Instagram. Yeah. We want to be professional and get an education. But those seven or eight, nine, ten things are not the top two. So I just wanted to, mm. when she says that it's not for the woman, it's for the guy, that hit me. Because mm. I don't have a woman living, I have, I'm in a relationship and my lady does not live with me. But my, my peace, my establishment, and what I want my family to look like starts with me. It doesn't start with her. It starts with my own value system and the things that I value for my life and for my black children and for my family that I have in the future as well. So I didn't mean to go over too much mm. of a tangent, but that's no. that number one, that is super important. Super right. important. And I, and I think we missed the <laughs> spiritual angle because we always associated with religion and yes. due to our traumatic connection to religion, a lot of us have disconnected in many different ways from spirituality. But that's about the wholeness of you and the universe. We 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 disconnect from that right away. Immediately. Um, yeah, man. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. This, this is clutch. Yeah. All right, here we go. He's got his health in order. I think this month is mental health awareness month. He got his health in order. Like I was talking about yesterday, a lot of black men aren't just having an obesity problem, but they have a health problems. That's a right. lot of black men have chronic illnesses. Diabetes, kidney failure, hypertension, gout, heart disease, chronic illnesses. 
a lot of them ha are having that problem. And I'm not saying that to run them down. I'm just saying what it is. A man with a value system has his family value in order. Around him, you're not going to have all that chaos and BS, especially within his home. And when you talk about his extended family, he has proper boundaries in place to deal with his family because a lot of our men are being raised just like we are in a gynocracy. So one of the first things he's going to have to do is create the boundary between his himself and his mother, who's probably going to be the main gynocrat in his life, as well as any other brother, sib sister, siblings, or whomever in his life, whether they have a good relationship, an okay relationship, or kind of bad relationship, he's going to have some boundaries with that. They're not going to be able to come over when they want, disrupt his life when they want, do this, that, and the third, get him all out, you know what I'm saying, out of bounds. It's not going to happen because he's not going to allow that. His appearance value is together. He know how he want to show up in the world. He know he showing up in the world as a man with some principles, with a value system, with a code he live by that he stick to. And it don't waver for nobody. You can say what you want to say and do what you want to do, but he going to be on this. And that's it. Thank you, Booker Ronan. So he understand how he's showing up in the world. And in any point or aspect of his appearance that needs to be addressed, he addresses it. Thank you, Sean. He got some pride in his dwelling. First of all, inside his home is going to be a certain way. It's going to have a certain energy to it. Outside of his home, he care about just the physical outside of it. You're not going to be littering and have trash and it's pee all in the hall. He's not dealing with none of that. Because the order that he brings is within his home and it extends immediately outside of it. And around it, the things that affect it. If you want me to keep going or <laughs> nah, bro. Nah, look, bro. I mean, it's just, I mean, oh man. Ooh. <laughs> So the first thing I thought of, and I want you to hit this. The first thing I thought of, Brandon, is that are those the kind of, number one, are those the kind of men that we are right now? That's number one. Are those mm -hmm. the kind of men we are right now? And number two, do black women want those kind of men? <laughs> I would say yes. I would, I would say yes. I'm going to say yes, because I asked this question to a couple of women, but are those the kind of men that we are right now with some of those principles? I'm going to say emphatically no, but we're working towards it because our results are not showing that we have that. But that's why we're putting out this sort of content so we can see. Even the, the thing about the appearance, even the thing about the appearance, there's, a, there's this YouTube guy that nobody likes <laughs> that keeps on talking about black men's appearance and being dressed to the tees and to lose the Jordans and to do this and everything has a time or a place. Right. And he's been talking this stuff from the beginning. Right. Because he realizes that our image is in our control. Same thing Kendra's mm -hmm. saying. We control how we look to the world. We may not control certain things, but you and I, Brandon, we control the content we're putting out. We control how we communicate. We control the words. That is what we can control. And so we have the opportunity to put some constructive content out there, just like tomorrow when you go to work, how you present yourself, how I present myself when I'm at work. So these are right. all things that we control. Um, I want you to talk about the health part, because mm -hmm. that's something as black men that we do not talk about enough. 
mm-hmm. which is we have all y'all brothers want to get on here talking about she's 300 pounds and look like a linebacker. <laughs> well, you 300 pounds and look like I don't, if you ain't a linebacker, you are offensive lineman and you are having major health problems too. Like it's the pot calling the kettle black. We are not a healthy community. No, nah. we're not a healthy community. Right. We need to get this. So I want you to talk a little bit about the health. Problem. You know that you know that linebacker stuff. It's like, bro, come on. I'm a linebacker, so yeah, You're yeah, a yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, I'm a big dude, man. Um, but but with that though, health in black men is is a is problematic. Um, because we traditionally don't take care of ourselves unless one of our limbs is falling off. Talk we got a me. hole in our body, or we cannot breathe. That's when we actually go and get some some help. We most black men don't have a primary care physician, which you nope. should. Most black men don't go to the dentist twice a year, which you should. Most men do not go and get a prostate exam once they get close to forty, if not at forty, which you should. Yeah. Right. Most black men, and this is the crazy thing. Most younger black men. <laughs> this is something new to me. Stop body shaming. Hey. <laughs> Man, whatever, man. Y'all must stop playing, man. <laughs> but most most younger black dudes, and I hear a lot of this feedback from women, and I'm talking about like 25 and under, they don't have routine hygiene. That that was something that surprised me. Like dudes ain't showering and stuff like they like like I was taught. I don't know. Maybe right. that was an old school thing. Look, two but a like day, the hygiene. Yeah. Brush yeah. your teeth three times a day. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's yeah. it's wild. But even like grooming, and this is something that I thought a lot about too. This has to deal with health is proper grooming when you're you know you're analyzing your body, you're taking mm-hmm, care of it. Mm-hmm. You may be shaving hairs and plucking things and facial washes and things of that nature. A lot of black men don't do those things. There's a there's a reason why a lot of younger black dudes have all of a sudden grown dreads. And the dreads don't be looking well kept. A lot of times they just be just out there. They looking like those island boys, you know them dudes, the white boys. You seen them? I'm an the island boy. boy. Yeah, no, you don't know. Right, about. No, anyway, it's a know about. I'm okay. gonna Google right. it. Google's your friend, Aaron. So well, <laughs> well, you seen Cam Newton's here at least. Yeah, I seen Cam. Yeah. yeah. All right. So yeah. that's how a lot of dudes' dreads look, and a lot of that stuff's not kept. Now, maintaining dreadlocks is expensive as well. Absolutely. But if you yeah. but if you're gonna rock that hairstyle, then you know the maintenance that it takes to get there. We've mm-hmm. gotten away from that. So when it comes to health, you know, eating right properly, things like that, a lot of men don't know how to cook. So it's hard to eat right when you don't know how to cook or you don't have a place to cook. So you go to McDonald's, you get all the quick options and it make them even quicker with technology where you can just get Uber Eats and DoorDash and all that. And then it's right Mm -hmm. there. So a lot of this is just dysfunction because we haven't developed skill sets and proper habits to take care of ourselves around health. Another thing around health that many black men don't do well is sleep. We stay up way too damn late, and we get up way too damn late. And I, there have been ton. I mean, I can't even count. Think about just some of the programs that I've I've worked on, where my my staff will start work at eight o'clock sometimes, eight thirty nine o'clock, but we won't see our first client to damn near noon because they ain't out of bed yet. Right. And these are black men we're trying to help get jobs and stuff. The business world has been up for six hours, and you just climbing out of bed, bro. Right. Like, so you, I got to Let me say this real behind. quick. Go no, ahead. no, but this is so. I'm a black man. I had a major, major snoring problem. So this mm-hmm. is this will help somebody. I was I had sleep apnea. And for those of you who don't know, sleep apnea is when you stop breathing in your sleep. Um, I, I am not extremely obese or anything mm-hmm. that I'm not, I would not be considered extremely obese. However, my snoring was so bad that in the in the in a minute's time, I would stop breathing about 45 times in a minute's time. They told me that if I that if I something bad happened at night, I could die in my sleep. So I had to get on a CPAP machine, which I use now, and I'm still going to use it until I until I drop enough more weight to where it, and it might, I might have to be on the CPAP forever. But mm-hmm. you know who told me? A black woman that said you need to check out this snoring because that's not natural. And a lot mm-hmm. of us are not getting the proper amount of rest. Because we're not taking care of ourselves and we refuse to go to a doctor. Man, I sleep seven to eight hours. I get up and this is factual. This is not what the young people call cap. Mm -hmm. I run four miles a day. I go to the gym every other day. It's because I have energy to do that. But before I couldn't do it because I was not taking care of my body. Men, if you're having sleeping issues, do not take it seriously. People are dying and they don't know why. And it's because it's either weight, you're having sleeping issues, 
But come on, man. Like, like, listen, I love that. Teaching our men how to be trap stars instead of basic living skills. You're supposed to rest. Don't let nobody tell you that you're not supposed to rest. So I just wanted right. to add that in there because hopefully no, that might that right. might have a guy go get a sleep test and it can save his life. Right. Yeah. yeah. And and I meet a lot of black men. They're usually older, like upper 40s uh, into their 50s Facts. that use sleep apnea machines, but they probably needed them in their 30s. Oh, my God. So it is, it is, yeah. <laughs> so it yeah. is an important thing to invest in and even consider. But again, if you if you are not thinking about maintaining your one of the reasons why I think we have bad health issues is because we're not thinking about maintaining our health because a lot of black men don't expect to live long. We live in the talk moment. Yeah. So we talk about, yeah. you know, this, um, you know, this instant gratification with the survival stress management, whereas the moment is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So why do I care about getting a colonoscopy uh, when I'm turned 42 years old? Shit, I'm just trying to make it to the end of the weekend. Like, that's how a lot of people are. So they're not even thinking about maintaining their health a long time. <clears throat> but again, without proper focus, back to the spirituality piece, without proper focus, you don't need to think about any of that stuff. No, I think right. one of the cures for us, both black men and black women, is to be more children focused. We should focus a lot of the things that we do based on the children that we have in our, in our community so they have a better life. If we huh. just if we galvanize around children, if we care enough about our kids. That's I think that, that would be a helpful motivation for us to start moving in the right direction. But that's a whole nother thing. But go ahead. No, no. Um, and I was just going to say, first of all, I appreciate you guys leaving your comments. Smash that like button. If you find the content constructive, share it with somebody, tag somebody, say Aaron is tripping. Brandon, they don't know what they talk about, but it's entertaining. <laughs> you know, no, whatever. But if y'all like the content, smash that like button. Please share it. But no, um, I think that 10 life value system, man, it's the first time I've heard it. But if you think about those components, man, even the dwelling, how we keep our homes, the spirit that you have in your home, the man. energy you have in your home. I become a lot. I become a minimalist in a lot of ways. I've been throwing stuff away because I'm like, my life used to be very cluttered. And now yeah. I have things very, very basic. And sometimes, and Brandon, we all know these. Y'all have had black people. You just walk in their house and I'm like, man, you just got a lot of stuff in this joint, man. You just, you just got a lot of stuff. Why you got? Why do you have a vacuum cleaner for forty years ago and you're using it like a TV stand? Like, what's going? on? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's Correct. that clutter. Yeah, it's the clutter, and I had to declutter some things. So you know, I take care of my dwelling. Um, so and it's just I have a, a pretty nice size house for just two people, but it's very minimalist. It's very, yeah. very small. It's very, very clean. It's just well kept because that is what I want my life to be, lack of clutter. And that also is because I want to have a plan. So I think this is good content so we can uh, we can keep rolling. Absolutely. A more Just a few more points on dwelling because I think that's so important and it gets yeah, skipped yeah, over. Yeah. When and you the don't family feel... part too. We didn't hit the family part. Either, oh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. swing back to that. Okay. When okay. you don't feel like you own anything or you literally don't own anything, you don't have what's called stewardship. And stewardship is a term that means act like an owner. So even if you don't own it, you take responsibility for it like it's yours anyway. We don't do that with our homes. We've been disconnected. We don't do that with our communities. We've been disconnected with that. We claim, we claim blocks and streets, and we don't maintain blocks and streets. It's a false confidence and a false ownership that we have over stuff that we really don't have control over. And that's one of the things that just like messes me up all the time. Mm. It's like, man, like we talk about dwelling and keeping space. We're more likely to dwell and keep space with a vehicle that we don't always own. <laughs> Might be somebody right. else's car. We take right. it into the car wash. Right. <laughs> then we do our own homes, bro. It's like we are so ass backwards when it comes to value systems that we have to do like a whole reconnect and redesign. But how did we get this way? I remember hearing things as a kid from elders in my family saying cleanliness is next to godliness. Now, mm -hmm. I wasn't a big Christian and neither was my mother, but I even heard that. That is gone. Right. That's gone. That, that is gone all out the way. So where do a lot of black men learn about maintaining their dwelling? Most of the people don't even know what that word means, but where do we where do we where do we learn that? Well, if we didn't have a man who taught us how to maintain a space. Mm -hmm. Then we had a mom or a grandma or a grandfather, something like that, who might have taught us how to keep things clean. But guess what? Most black men, and this is where you get these red pill black men, they learn it in the military. That's where they learn dwelling. 
right. making their beds. Structural uh, order, stru absolutely. Yep. But then, but but how do they learn it? Think about this. They learn it by having people yelling at you, in your face, threatening your life, damn near putting you right. to a death place just for you to get your <laughs> to wear a shirt correctly and maintain yourself. We don't think about that. Mm. But it's important for us to think about that as we go. So when we talk about this dwelling piece, I mean, that that is a part of your man code is making sure your stuff is just proper and together. And that leads into family and creating those boundaries. You can't have proper dwelling when every time you let your siblings come over and they just trash your place. That's a fact. Right? Or you go over to your or you go to your siblings' house and they ain't they ain't cut the grass, they ain't shovel the snow, it's trash everywhere. It's like what the hell? Then they come over your house and then they expect it to be the way that it is at their house. Right. right. You have to set up that boundary in that box with family, which is tough. And Kendra talked about the mom and the male at that point and how that might be the toughest boundary to break. Mm. And I, and, I, and that was and that was the piece that hit me in the video clip because I and I've told this story publicly online before. Me and my mom are good. She's actually been on, on the uh on the podcast before too. But there was a point in time in college where I had to tell my mom no. And I remember like it almost having a damn panic attack before because right. I, I I had to call her back and I was like I can't I got to tell her no. Man, that was the hardest thing I ever did in my life. Man, I, I just took all the exams and all these things. That was the hardest thing I've ever done was tell my mom, no, nah, I can't give you no money. And 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 at that moment, our dynamic shifted. It changed. And it went from like, oh, Brandon ain't just the little boy, he ain't my son right. anymore. Like, he's a right. man. He just told me no. <laughs> right. Like, and, 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 and there was a level of respect that was gained from me doing that. And I learned that at like 20 years old. Like, I was a young man at that time. Um, but it has led me to where I am now, where that level of respect is still there, and it's important. But you have to maintain that with all your family members, not just your mom. What do you think about the family piece? No, and I, the first thing that that um, that I thought that I thought of when you were talking about that is shout out to Ma Dukes, we love her. Um, the boundaries that you have to have as men, and um, I immediately thought about some of these conversations that I've had with black women about our 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 male and female dynamics, and 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 you and I both know Brandon. In many cases, because of the lack of respect sometimes for black men in the household, women are looking for a guy that they can run over. And when a guy has these principles and these things in place, that is not the... First of all, you really yeah. don't want that kind of individual. You see, you don't want black, that kind of guy in the first place. Yeah, black and, black women don't know what to do with a man like that. And I've had yeah. black women tell me that. You have everything together. I don't even know what to do for you. It's like, you ain't got to do nothing. I didn't ask you to do anything. Right, but. And, and I, but, but here's the other deal that we have to be honest about. There's not a lot of us that have that mentality. Right. And that's, that's the key part is that when you have the in order, like, okay, no, we're not going to, no. We're not going to Aunt Gina's house this Christmas because she's dysfunctional. She drinks all the time. And I don't like the environment. And the woman, well, that's my family. But every time we leave there, it's toxic and nothing constructive happens. What does Mr. Fuller say? No contact, no conflict. Yep. And guess what? We've just seen with Dolph and all these. We've seen a lot of situations go bad because of people having very minimum, minimum conflicts over just basic contact. I agree with Mr. Fuller a thousand percent. We all have a level of poison in us. And as mm. black men, we need to recognize it and establish that. Like you said, Randy, you can't go to every family member's house. Mm. And sometimes you shouldn't go there because there's a lot of conversations that families should be having that they're not. It's not a healthy environment. And I do believe that it's the man's uh, job to help establish that, to help, because he might see things that she doesn't see and vice versa. That's why it has to be a healthy relationship. It might have to be, baby, I know you love mom, but every time we go over there, it's not clean. It's not healthy. People you arguing. Old, people arguing. <laughs> it's not a, a good environment. <laughs> the kids don't even like going over there. It's dirty. <laughs> Listen, and, and y'all, people are laughing. We know that this stuff happens. Yeah. It's something that's not, I forget about other cultures. In our culture, I'm talking about cleaning up our backyard. I know yeah. other cultures have their own issues. We have to clean up our backyard because these are our results that we have. So. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. These five internal principles. I mean, all 10 of them are good, but we got a lot of internal work to do as black men. And I Absolutely. think this is a good foundational start. And again, I think you hit on a key point. Most women don't want a man who has these five internal principles intact because we are seen as weird. This is where the educated lames get frustrated is because a lot of times they've established some of these. They might not have established all of them. 
and they and then the women who they they expect because they have reached a current level of status, the women that they expect that are supposed to be banging down their doors and coming at them, they don't want them because most black women have been conditioned to build a man and not cooperate with one. That's part of the problem. Because they've been conditioned not to expect to even have a man. And when you do have him, he's going to be broken, girl. So you got to put something into him and invest in him. Right, right. And most I, black men have been conditioned to accept that. And I think that that's huge, uh, definitely problematic. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, man, the um, Brandon, we're both in corporate America. You know, I do okay. <laughs> I, do, I, I do okay for myself. But you and I both know. And it doesn't have to be corporate. You could be uh, blue collar. Um, you could yeah. be, you could own a company. There is a certain level of discipline that it takes to get to those places. The mm -hmm. black men that are in those spaces, if you're in sales or brand, what I do or Brandon, we don't have a lot of time to deal with a whole lot of BS. <laughs> right. <laughs> so our days, no, our days are very restrictive. They're very ordered. This happens at this time. And sometimes I think that you know, it's funny. I was watching a movie the other day, and you know, you just see you see a lot of brothers just standing around on the corner. It might have been some drug movie or something like that. And brothers are just standing on the corner, and I was like, I, whenever I drive around and I see just black men just hanging out, I'm like, unless you're some big time drug dealer, there's nothing successful about that because yeah. the men that are doing things that are constructive, they don't have time to do nothing. We are producing in any way that we can, and I think that. In our society, Brandon, in our culture, we're not even used to seeing that level of discipline because so many of us have not obtained it. We don't know that level of discipline that it takes because in order in order for us, even some of the stuff that Kevin talks about, I don't agree with. You don't know. You want a you want a physician that makes five hundred thousand. You want a plumber that is running a, a <laughs> ship, is running a crew, and he makes one hundred and eighty thousand. Or you want a sales guy that works at a car dealership that might make fifty to eighty thousand. He doesn't have time to be on the phone. His life has a level of discipline and structure to it to where, baby, you, you know, girl, I'll use my girl, girl, I can't talk to Antoine right now. He's working. No, mm. you can't. He's mm. not not doing anything. He's working. He's trying to be constructive. And I think that we don't see those levels. We did see them back in the day because I, I do remember a lot of times, like my granddad, my dad was talking about my granddad. It's like granddad would get up and go to work at six and you wouldn't see him until eight. And guess what? Mom would say, I want to talk to my dad. You're not talking to your dad right now. He's working. And when he gets home, that's when we'll talk to him. A level of discipline for success. And those are the things that we have to have coming back into our community. Great conversations, man. Great conversations. Here, here. I'll show people a, a snapshot of my calendar. <laughs> yeah, look, this, I can show mine on my phone. It. It's crazy. Yeah, right, absolutely. So this, is, this is two of my calendars in one, as you can see by the color scheme. This is what this remember I talked about earlier in the podcast. I was a single dad for 30 days. <laughs> right, right, this right. is during that 30 days. Now I had to cut my hours to start at nine, but a lot of times I start at eight. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Every week, bro. Things to do. Look at this. Look at it. I don't even know how I got half of this shit done. Let's be honest with you. Right. Yeah, this, I've been Brandon. I've been productivity, working activity, man. Yeah, man. This I've been working 12 hour days for the last probably month. Literally. 12 hour days for last. My son will tell you, man, hey, bro, I, my son will be like, my dad goes in the basement at nine o'clock. He come up from the basement at nine o'clock. Productivity, Working. man. You, yep. you gotta, you got, you have to. It has to be day. a balance, though. I was, <laughs> yeah, oh, here not... we go. See, here we Come on, man. <laughs> come on. Come on. Now, <laughs> now, now. <laughs> she was doing good. <laughs> Baby girl, you were doing good. You actually agreed. You I don't was... think. <laughs> I don't think that I don't think she was here when I was talking about the single dad life thing. I was just highlighting an example of how you have to have a structured life. I know it's hard for single. Moms. I actually made a documentary on single moms. Of course it is, absolutely. And we don't want to be those dudes, so y'all ain't got to worry about us. So I throw, throw that I throw that documentary link in the chat. Just yeah. so you know, I ain't joking. Yeah. So yeah, no, I I, I mean I grew up in a domestic violence household. Yeah, yeah, but but for the most part, like. I grew up with a single mom. I get it. And I'm very sensitive to the yeah. issues. And it's unfortunate that those single moms don't have a network because guess what? Black single motherhood is not a new concept. It's been around. But when we lived in the rural South, we were a lot tighter knit of a community. Yeah. And a lot of those single strong. black, a lot of those single black moms were 
kind of engulfed into a more communal thing. This is where that whole village raised a child concept mm -hmm. continued for us after slavery ended was because we were still in these like enclaves of family members and close friends who would take care of folks. And what ended up happening is once we got moved to the West, moved to the East and moved to the Midwest, what in the North, what ended up happening was we broke a lot of that up. So yeah, you still have to be pr productive, you know, productive as a single mother, yep. but as a man, you should still have productivity in your life, period, whether you have kids or not. And that's what we're talking about. We have too many men with idle time doing too much absolutely time. nothing and then troubles finding them. And that's and they and they're not they're not goal directed on anything besides women. <laughs> Almost said something else. But and that's a problem. <laughs> and a pause. Right. Yeah, they got they got the wrong P, <clears throat> the P on their mind. They ain't got prosperity, man. They got their other P on their mind. Right. You got or you peace. got us to or, or peace. peace. Yeah. But but again, peace is making sure that the woman that I'm with ain't nagging me. That's where black men's mindsets yeah, are. Yeah, that's a bad that's what they yeah, consider peace is, yeah. that the woman just stop nagging about stuff. That ain't what peace is, man. Mm -hmm. That's not it. So we, we have a lot of deconstructing and rebuilding to do amongst ourselves. And if we're not going to be honest about these things, then we can't do it. And what ends up happening, to bring it back to Red Pill content, is we mm -hmm. get a lot of men who in this space who are hearing things, these concepts and understandings that nobody's really told them and they're become and they're truths to them, but the way that they live them out is toxic and they become very combative and harmful and destructive. And guess what? Just like Kevin tells these women they're gonna die alone with a dog, so are these dudes. <laughs> Man, these dudes listen. are gonna die alone too because they're not looking for companionship, they're trying to be dictators over women, and that's not gonna work. Nope. The cooperation, healthy relationships. That's the goal. That's but the goal. Let me get off my high horse. Should we go back to Kendra? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, let's finish up. Yeah, yeah, let's finish All right, up. Last clip, last, last clip from Kendra. Last clip, last clip. Shout out to K, man. <laughs> Crimson Cure, we want you on the show. I'm predicting it right now. Come on, K. We got we got we gotta, yeah. we gotta figure out a way. We're gonna start doing interviews in 2022. So we're gonna make it happen. All right. So here's the last segment from Kendra. She's just dropping more gems. We'll talk about it on the other side. A man that makes $150,000 is not inherently a better man than the man that makes $45,000 annually. It makes him earn more money. That's what it makes him do. He's a higher earner than that other man. Okay? So the man that makes $150,000 isn't necessarily a better man than the man that makes 45,000 a year, but it does make him a better earner. He earns better. He may have more education, which allow him to earn more. This is possible. So what we have, what do we, what does that show us? Because there's a big narrative about a high value man and defining that man based only on the external five of the 10 life values. We never talk about the internal five of that value system. To define a high value man, it is only looked at his mobility, his education, his profession, his leisure, and his wealth. No one ever talks about his spiritual base, his health, mental, emotional, physical, his family dynamics, his appearance value, nor his dwelling value. Nobody ever talks about that. It's as if these things are unimportant or not supposed to exist when you talk about all of the components that make a man better, that make a man higher value. Because these are the same components that makes a woman better and make a woman of higher value. Same components. There's a lot of talk 
about what women submit to and what they don't submit to. And I've said it several times and I noticed no one talks about it. No one responds to me. When I say this, they just keep going with whatever narrative they've got in their head. But I have said what women actually submit to. But there are too many talking points in this space that focus on money, leisure, and mobility. The collective of the men, black men specifically, focus on those things because as a group, those are the parts of the 10 life values that they feel they lack in the most, the mobility, the leisure, and the wealth. So they figure if we gain these things, these are the only missing components that will make our women fall in line. Couple of fallacies with that thought, but I'm only gonna focus on one. <laughs> Man, I mean, again, I, I love how Kendra broke that down because and, and the last point is why it's so important. We focus in this space, we focus on those three things because they seem so far reaching for many of us. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to talk about them and harder to do them. Now, right. we both have we both have made six figures for several years of our lives. Mm -hmm. I've made more than 150,000 several times. Um that's not enough. <laughs> I don't know about it you. It's never enough. It's not it even a lot. It ain't of, never enough. It's not it even a lot. With inflation, of money. it ain't even. Man, listen, it's getting rough out here. It's not <laughs> even a lot. That, that's the thing. I'm like, man. Like, I listen to these conversations, and I know fifty thousand. Once you hit fifty thousand dollars for a black man, it puts you like in the top ten of black male earners, which is just abysmal. Like, that's so awful. Yeah. But $150,000 ain't a lot, bro. I, I live in Minnesota. Country, not in this country. Nope. I live in Minnesota. The cost of living here is high. We have a lot of jobs due to the healthcare industry and nonprofit sector and all that. We have a lot of Fortune 500 companies. 150000 ain't it, bro. I, I got to make more. It ain't, it ain't enough, man. And it's like we get so stuck on that six-figure number and we just spin that wheel that we're missing all these other things that are important for us to be mo to mobilize in other spaces Absolutely. and to be these black men of value. Go ahead, man. What you think? No, I mean the economic mm -hmm. part is that, and also that we have to know more about economics in general. Mm -hmm. And that number is, you know, I mean, I, I'm in, I do banking, so and somebody says they make a hundred grand, I say, okay, you make sixty five or seventy. Yeah, because thirty grand is in taxes, so we're not even thinking about these numbers correctly. And it's also what metropolitan area do you live in that's why i became yep. a minimalist i earn a pretty good lifestyle but my bills are not what other people's bills are is because i see what's coming in the future which right. means that i need to keep my expenses as low as possible i have no debt i have nothing because i want to make sure i can continue to earn because i'm not basing my lifestyle on income i haven't seen yet i'm basing my lifestyle on the, the my i have a basic budget that i follow every single month and it works for me um but man she she hit on man Kendra was just the talking about the fact that we focus on that the it's like the scarcity mindset, Brandon. Mm. It's the, it's the things we don't have when none of those things matter if we don't have the top five. What does earning all this income have if you don't have a spiritual base to where you'll even know what to do with those resources properly for your family? Right. What does it matter if you have a poor, if you have poor health? If you see if you can pull it up, perfect. You the man. If you have poor health, what does it matter if you, if your family is out of order? What does it matter if you have a poor appearance? And what does it matter if you're, if you're, if you're dwelling in where you live is? But you know what the funny thing is when I think about these things, I do hear how black men and black women talk about these. <laughs> that Negro don't go to church. <laughs> He's too fat. His family's out of order. 
He don't got a Gucci belt, and he live at home with his mama. That's how we – now, you tell me am I lying, Brandon. You tell me am I lying. <laughs> and, and that's our educators. It's just too <laughs> that's our That's our educators. So those, those, so those things that are important, Deltas. that is how we – that's how we discuss him. He living with his mama. He don't even look right. His family crazy. Something wrong I, with his health. He don't even go to church. Come on, y'all. I don't want no scrub. Do better, man. I don't want I don't no scrub. Want no scrub. Yeah. Stop. And and for us as men, these things, the top five things that Kendra has listed, Brandon, you and I know, it makes the bottom 10 easier to obtain because yeah. you have the spiritual base, you have the health, you have the peace. In order, It's very difficult to start to become a better person if you're dysfunctional in all these other areas of your life. It's it's damn near impossible. Yeah. It's damn near impossible. But go ahead, bro. The other key that's not that doesn't get talked about cuz I just think we don't have enough mm-hmm. verbal black people in these spaces is that those external five are heavily dependent on the internal five because a lot of times those doors of of opportunity open because you have stability in these other areas. Facts. Let me be very clear. I'm an executive director of a nonprofit organization. I know damn well that board would not have chose me if the, if I was not a married black man with a family. If I did not have some foundational par- um, principles, if my appearance wasn't correct, if I didn't talk about community and home, that those are attractive things that people are look at me and they're like, okay, minor. this brother is on to something. He is doing something that we want him to lead the charge here. Mm. I have two master's degrees. That's great. That gets me just to the door. It doesn't get me in the door. That's a fact. What gets me in the door is what else I bring, the value systems and things that I bring. That is important. So when we have these conversations about high-value men and pookies and ray rays and all this stuff, we are still missing a lot of context and we get caught in the emotionalism of it all. And right. then we, and then we don't get anywhere. And we have these conversations on live stream after live stream for eight hours after eight hours. <laughs> not eight, Brandon, day. not eight. I've been, like, I've seen eight hour live streams. Oh, I saw a seven hour one the other day. So I ain't going Gee. <laughs> no, I can't do it no more. But what, what ends up happening is we don't dive deeper in there because many of us, this is, the, this is what I think. This is my bias. I think the dirty little secret is many of us don't believe any of this is achievable, so it's mm. easy to talk about. It's just it's, it's a, it's a it's what's called a football conversation. It just goes back and forth, back and forth, right? It's just like saying, you know, do you believe, are you pro-choice or not? It's like it doesn't matter at the end of the day because you're just going to keep talking about it every election right. cycle. Yeah, intellectual Nothing. masturbation. Yeah, all day, yeah. all long. day long. <laughs> so when it comes to these five, these ten principles, it's important. But when we get into this high value space, there are men of certain st- statuses. That's really what we're talking about. Everybody ain't supposed to be there. Everybody ain't gonna be there. This is right. just like when we talk about the what's the solution in the black community? Entrepreneurship. Everybody ain't built to be no. an entrepreneur because no. a lot of people can't hold down jobs at Wendy's. So it ain't gonna work. Some people going to get there, and that's who the message is for. The others who ain't, they have a different message to help them get to a different right. space right. and a place. And we have to understand in this system, that's how it works. This is the pyramid that we don't talk about, capitalism. <laughs> like, this is how this pyramid works right. in this context that we live in. And it's unfortunate. It does cause harm to some people. But unless you have the organization and network to change it, you have to participate Facts. in the best way possible. Absolutely. No, you hit it right on the head. And, and in reference to, I think that's where we talked in the beginning, where we're not shaming each other because we have to create an infrastructure for everybody, whether or not you're the janitor, you're the CEO, you're on a troll. We, the infrastructure has to be there so we can have healthy outcomes. And black people, that's why Instagram, this is my theory, Brandon. Instagram is so popular among black people because you get to, uh, what's Mr. Fuller call it? You get the show off. Is, Showcase. You can yeah. just showcase all the foolishness that you want to, but that's not real life. We have people that have a regular job. I am a banker. Ain't nothing flashy about what I do. I look at numbers every single day, all day long. It's not a flash. It's not nobody's laying on the beach all day. Nobody's got a Lamborghini. And the reality <laughs> is that's not most of America, but that's right. what we're selling each other. And the problem is, is that when we're selling that stuff online, let's be honest, it's intentional because that's what attracts people. 
So you can attract people to leisure and the wealth. But the problem is, is that when they don't have the top five, we have no base and we have no community. We have no base. We have no community. Because like she said, we're focusing on the professional, the leisure and the wealth. But what kind of people are we spiritually? What kind of people are we health wise? I can tell you guys, I'm in coaching. All the coaches talk about are the first five. They rarely ever talk about the last ones. <laughs> rarely. Yeah. They rarely, they spend most of the time talking about the top five yeah. because the spiritual and the health and the family makes everything on the bottom yeah. easier because yeah. you have the discipline yeah. and you have the order. We're just out of order. And particularly as men, we're out of order. But that's why we're doing some of this stuff because you can listen to this podcast, play it back and take some of these ideas and say, you know what? Maybe my spiritual, maybe, maybe I need to, whatever your spirit, whether it's Allah, whether it's Jesus, whether it's Buddha, I don't care what it is. You got to have a base of something. You can't just be existing in this world. Your health, be honest with yourself. I love what Mr. Fuller says. Don't lie to yourself. You're overweight. You need to ask it. Some of us don't feel good every day. Yeah. And we convince ourselves that we do. Some of us knows our family dynamics are out of order. You know, your son dynamic is out of order. Your mom is your mom is a heavy drinker. No, nobody went, and it's just toxic. And then how you feel about how you look every single day. You can fix that. And you know your home is not clean. You know your home is just everywhere. It's just there's no peace. These are things that you can control yourselves. The bottom ones will take care of themselves, but we have to address the top five. Mm. Let's close out on Dolph. So... Real quick. Man, these- I, I have a lot of theories on this, Brandon, and some of them are not very popular, bro. I'll be honest with you, man. Well, I'll, I'll share one thought that connected to this these uh, these value system here. And and for me, I think where Dolph made a vital mistake, a life-threatening mistake, is in appearance. You can't – something that – I don't know if you're familiar with the legendary radio broadcaster, Star. If you're familiar with Star? Yeah, man, Star is crazy. Yeah. That's the dude that <laughs> made that comment about when Aaliyah died. Aaliyah, yeah, he wanted to yeah. Raise yeah. That. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Star's still around. He got he has a he has a show that he does pretty right, much right, right. sometimes a week. But there's there's a few things that Star says that I find very very accurate. He talks a lot about you can't show your plate Back to me. wolves, mm. and the streets got to eat. When you are riding around in a in a foreign you know, $200,000 vehicle wrapped. They're all wrapped the same in camouflage. You are a target, my friend. You are a target. Your appearance is important. And I get it. It's it's nice for videos and all that stuff, but you can't be out here caught lacking. And and, there are, and I don't know if people are paying attention to what's happening in every major metro. Talk about it. Area. Don't do it, Brandon. Let's talk about it. But... But the wolves is hungry, man. The streets got to eat. And these boys ain't playing. Not at all. And, and they don't care. And they're all holding. When you hear, <laughs> oh, my God. When you hear them saying, I'm pumping my gas with the tool out, that's real. And folks who live in Atlanta know they ain't going to the gas station without their strap. You cannot be caught lacking out here. Because we are at a point in time where we keep talking about white supremacy. We need to be talking about what's happening with these young boys and these guns. It's getting crazy. I feel so bad that Dolph had left children, but he, he, he lived that life. He talked about it at least, and it caught up to him, unfortunately. Appearance is so important, and we have to be honest about what's taking place in the society. Go ahead. So... You know, the first thing is that you know Adolf was Adolf was his name. I did not, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm and I'm not. I'm not saying that. That is his him. name. No, yeah, Adolf. 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 Um. Uh, Adolf Robert. I think. Um. So mm-hmm. the first thing is I want to give my condolences to his mom because his mom didn't know young Dolph. His mom. His mom had a son named Adolf, and his daughter and his family probably you know Dolph is who he was to everybody else, but Adolf was you know the dad. But I want to remind everybody of something, and it's unfortunate, but, you know, even when I have a tombstone and, and if I made some poor decisions, this was the third attempt on his life, Brandon, in the last five years. Yeah. He was shot three times in California Yep. at the CIAA tournament in Charlotte, North Charlotte. Carolina. 
his car was shot up, his school bus was shot up a hundred times. Mm-hmm. Made a very popular song on it. Made a song. <laughs> I hear people online saying stuff like Dolph didn't have any ops and all this other kind of foolishness. Let me tell you something, Brandon. I ain't the smartest person in the world. You ain't trying to kill nobody three times unless you've got some problems in the street, bro. Mm-hmm. Unless mm-hmm. you made unless you made some sort of decisions. And um, unless unless it's everything, everybody's a hater. Because that's the other thing I hear. Everybody's a hater. They didn't like his 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 army. Comp- this guy had some problems um, in the streets, well known between other rappers who are now getting investigated as well. But um, it's very very sad. But um, in these urban cities, man, this grand culture, this drill music, this stuff is getting real. And if it ain't if it ain't at your doorstep, you better stop thinking that it's not. And that's why these things are so important because. When I look at those videos, man, I don't see any black fathers in any of those videos when them kids are holding up those guns and stuff like that. And some of those kids, let's be honest, they're my I have a 17-year-old son and I have a 21-year-old son. And those kids that are in those videos are those ages. I just thank yeah. God that I that I had the opportunity to be in their lives and give them some sort of structure cuz if I wasn't, they could have easily fell into that trap, bro. Yeah. And and um I don't want to say that those young men are 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 um that it's a death sentence for them, but I think that two things can be true. We need to help them, but also you got to know how to move out here. And listen, I listen to rappers all the time. Fabulous always be like, tuck your chain. Hey, this is not the time. Too much flossing. We are not, man, people are poor, Brandon. They are poor. And when poor people are poor, they make bad decisions, man. And we have to be aware of it and condolences to his family, but um, I'm just not sure how to, I'm not sure how to take it in because Man, three times on your life, Brandon? Three times. Three attempts. I can't even imagine one. You know, and then like you said, he made a song. He made a song about it. Let's be real. Pac did the same thing. Shot me five times. I took it and smiled. Everybody man. can get got, man. Condolences to his family. But we're not bulletproof out here. We have to be serious about everything we're doing in this society. Everything. Mm. That was the name of one of his albums, by the way. What's that? Bulletproof. Bulletproof. Hey, man. <laughs> it's it's. I mean, it's. I mean, Brandon. He. I mean, and and the last thing I know we were a bit on here, but the last thing Kwame <laughs> Brown said something. No, no, no. But Kwame Brown said something. And, you know, sometimes I don't like listening to these dudes because they just be talking. <laughs> but he did say something I heard the other day. He said, "Man, we live in a society to where I wish Young Dolph could just walk around and wear 40-40 and wear 40 gold chains all the time. Because that's the way it's supposed to be. But it's not. What is it? Like, he's a grown man that has done his, that has done well, and he still can't walk. It is like he's living in a bubble, Brandon. And as many black men, that's what we feel like. He's living in a bubble. What can he do? I can't go home. I have to live under this rock. I have to... That's not a life. That's not a life, man. So hopefully we can make some changes to this system. But... um. That's a that's a very hard life to live, man. That's a very hard life to live. But you know, and then um the last thing, and I appreciate everybody getting on here, but his his lady had a movement that um black fathers deserve black men deserve mm. to live long to grow old. Mm. Black men deserve to grow old, and that was his lady's movement because she lost her brother to gun violence. So we do deserve to grow old. And we, and the reason why we're putting out this content is so, you know, hopefully we're doing this at 90 to 95 and somebody hears it and they find it constructive, but uh, we got a lot of work to do. We appreciate everybody hopping on and sharing it and and hitting that like button. y'all. Absolutely. That's a great place for us to end. Don't just hit the like button, subscribe. We got more content on the way. Come on y'all. We're going to build this thing out. Keep it rolling. Keep it pushing. Thank you all for tuning in. Be sure if you found something constructive about it today, please be sure to share it and let Crimson Cure know we want her on the podcast. Yes, come on, yeah. Kendra. Send her a message. <laughs> Send Kendra a message. Tag her. Flood her comments. Something. Uh, and definitely just just let her know because you know we're gonna keep pumping out this content. We're gonna see how big this thing goes. Uh, and we appreciate all y'all, especially the returners. And if this is your first time, come check us out again. With that, we are out. Peace.